Well, I'm Patrick Stocks. I work over at uh, Data Design Studio here in Raleigh, and this session we'll be covering link reclamation strategies. Now, does anyone know what that means? You just all decided this was interesting and you wanted to come anyway. Link reclamation, it involves multiple steps, but basically it's taking back the links that you've already had, that were already pointed to your website and got lost, or we'll go into it more, but um, like maybe you were mentioned in the local newspaper or media, but they didn't link to you. Anytime someone mentions your brand, your person, your product, they should include a link. And if not, the kind of idea is to reach out and get that link from them. Um, so with starting a campaign, as this does, quick wins are great. Everyone expects immediate results. It's not always the case. SEO takes time. Uh, but link reclamation can be a good way to show a quick win. Um, again, so many companies have been burned. You can show quick wins and then <laughs> disappear from Google next month as well. So that's not what you want. Uh, but you also want results. Like clients always want results. Everyone wants results for their business. They want to be paid one immediately. Um, and typically, like people try and take, I don't want to say shortcuts, because campaigns, once you've got your foundation in place, Campaigns go to a more creative, more outreach, but really you need to get, go for the easy wins, like go for your, the links that you already should have that are already pointed to you but broken. Um, and it can actually be links, not just like off-site, but on your own website. If you ever use a tool like uh, Screaming Frog, is anyone familiar with that? Uh, it's a crawler uh, that you can easily sort by the status code return for pages on your site. So, for instance, you can find 404 errors, pages that are broken, that you're actually linking to from another page on your own website. And go and fix them in a matter of minutes. Uh, redirects are how you fix those 404s. Um, basically, they're meant to indicate to search engines that it's a change in location. Um, and it will take, it will physically pass a user from one location to another. Um, and they're, they're important, it passes the value of the links as well. So rather than a broken link that a user ends up at a 404 page and then maybe they click back to your homepage, maybe they just leave because they didn't find what they were looking for. This allows you to pass them to where they're supposed to be. They're called permanent. A 301 is called a permanent redirect, but they're really not. Uh, the name is very, very misleading, um, and that's a problem. Like, really, they're, they're permanent only as long as they still exist. Um, so we see this a lot at the design where someone will come to us and their traffic just went away out of nowhere. Could be that they changed domain names and they let their old domain expire. So if that domain was redirected, it was passing all of its value. If they let it lapse, and it could have been one from five years ago, if they let that lapse suddenly, they could tank their traffic half or more. And it happens all the time. Or people don't implement redirects after a uh, change in site structure or a new website redesign. Um, it's one of those things that gets overlooked way more than it should. Uh, this is one example of an actual client where um, the site, I mean the redirects were failed. The, the first arrow is where they dropped, and they dropped hard. This was actually a weekly review, but um, their traffic dropped over 80% just overnight. Brand new website, should have been great, greatest thing ever, you know, everyone's always excited with a new website, but when your leads die off, that's when you start worrying. Uh, the second one is where we came in and we actually did the redirects. And in this particular case, it wasn't just redirects from like the previous version of the site, it was through five generations of this website. Um, so we went back through what's called the Wayback Machine, the Internet Archive 
and we actually grabbed all the links from there. So basically, all the pages that had ever existed on their website, we took and redirected to current pages. And that reclaimed a lot of links for them. Um, I think, yeah. You can actually see a spike up. This is actually a client where it wasn't failed. This is just one where we went and did it as a typical part of starting a strategy with them. The spike here, yellow, is referring domains. I mean, they, I think uh, they had around 400 referring domains anyway. It jumped up almost 100. So if you think about that, like those, those domains are what are adding, what are making your site rank. Like those links are powerful. They're adding authority to your website. And this is something that took maybe four hours in this case. And we probably boosted them 20%. I mean, that's, that's a huge, quick win. And the traffic, it had a seasonal drop off, but it came back strong in the new year. Um, in this case, I think it was almost a 50%, well, more than 50% increase after just a few months. Uh, in, the, in the case before, I mean, this was double almost overnight. Within a month, their, their traffic had doubled from where it was. And I mean, this was steady for a very long time. Well over a year, the traffic was almost identical and then suddenly up. Um, the process I actually used for this, uh, I wrote a, an article for Search Engine Land that was actually just published at about 9.30 this morning. So good timing, yay. <laughs> Uh, but this step-by-step -step process is actually on Search Engine Land right now. I don't have a link to it because I didn't know what that was going to be or when they were going to publish it. Um, you can also find old individual pages. Like That part of the strategy was just to redirect old pages from your own site. Sometimes people link and they don't spell the page, like the URL was wrong. They, they typed something incorrectly when linking. They maybe misspelled your brand name. Uh, so you can actually use other tools, Ahrefs, Open Site Explorer, Majestic, and Google Webmaster Tools to find those. Well, Webmaster Tools is more to find the 404s that will come in. Google Webmaster Tools will tell you the not found errors when someone's trying to go to your website. So. Typically, if, you're, if you do launch a new website, you want to be monitoring that because more than likely something, some page somewhere changed. Um, and if it's broken, then the value is lost. I mean, Google knows your content all the way back at least 15 plus years if they've crawled your website. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of you have heard duplicate content issues, but really they know that this content existed on this page 10 years ago, if you haven't changed content, hopefully you've updated a little bit. Um, but even then, like the, the value of the pages themselves, it's not just external links, but internal links. Google has histories of your entire old sitemaps. All your internal links made your old pages somewhat valuable as well. And a lot of the redirection strategies don't involve reader. They only look for pages that have external links going to them. They completely ignore the internal links. So they're still losing value. I mean, salvaging a few links can be huge. If, <laughs> if uh, you had a link from maybe the Raleigh Chamber of Commerce, that would be a good lo local link. If you have a link in Forbes or Huffington Post or some big industry specific site for you, if one of those gets lost, I mean, it can affect your traffic across the board. It can affect your rankings across the board. So even picking up a few can be huge. Um, this is also where it's risky because SEOs have not always been the, <laughs> the most white hat people. Um, sometimes, especially years ago, it was very common for a lot of web spam. And that can actually hurt you. Um, this is Google Penguin algorithm. Penguin is an algorithm to detect unnatural links. Um, if someone went out and made a thousand blog comments, if someone went and made a thousand guest posts, or almost anything 
in too big of a quantity can throw a red flag. This can actually lead to a manual penalty or even an algorithmic penalty, either way. Manual penalty, Google will tell you in one master tool is algorithmic. You kind of have to figure out based on when your traffic dropped. Um, but you need to monitor, I didn't include that slide, sorry, took that out. Um, you need to monitor the links that are coming in. So use, again, Google Webmaster Tools and see your incoming links. Your incoming links will tell you, like, if, if you did recover a lot of lost links and you start seeing way too many and they're, they're spammy type links, um, I mean, there's any number of ways someone could have <laughs> used spammy tactics to rank your site in the past. And it's, sometimes it's better that those are just gone. But if you did recover a lot of those, what you have to do is, Google has a file called a, dis, uh, a disavow file. They have a tool for it. And you can actually say, please don't count this against me. I have no control of this. I have no way of removing this. As long as you just have an algorithmic penalty, that's all you have to do. If, if, they, if you're on top of it, it'll never get past that. If they slap you with a manual penalty, you have to do a lot more work to clean that up. I mean, it's outreach and trying to trying to actually get those links removed. Um, so it's good to monitor in the, <laughs> the few weeks after just to make sure that you're not gonna get smacked. Uh, another issue with this, especially for large sites, can be too many, uh, too many redirects, too many rewrites uh, in the HD access file. Um, again, the process is actually on search engine land, so I know I'm not covering it in depth here, and I apologize. Uh, but there's, there's more information there as well. Um, the problem with too many redirects in the HD access can be a very slow load time for your web page. It is it's not something you want. I mean, uh, it's arguable what's too many. I would say that depends on the server resources that you have. Uh, but anytime you get into thousands, in some cases hundreds of thousands, millions, there are other ways of doing it besides the HD access file, though. Uh, there's rewrite maps. There's there's actually cloud services where you can kind of offload your redirects similar to a, a CDN, a content delivery network. Um, there's ways around it, but they should be done. There's ways to make it faster, not ways around it, sorry. Um, another part of link reclamation would be just, as I mentioned earlier, where, you should, where you're already mentioned, you should have a link. Newspaper, you, you might have done something for a charity, your na personal name might have been mentioned. Like these guys, they have it on their site. They probably have a few, almost everyone probably has a few articles that mention them. Um, lawyers, for instance, are covered all the time for cases they've tried. Um, any mention that if you have a particular brand, a certain product that it has its own specific name, uh, these are these are ones where you want to go out and try and find um, find the mentions of yourself. So this, this is one way. You can just do like your name or your brand with a search query in Google. Uh, this is going to return, the minus site is basically to return any links that do not have a link back to your website. So it's going to look for, let's say, your, your president or CEO's name without a link to their website. Now we have a targeted list of people to, or websites that we need to find people to send an email and say, hey, can you link back to you know, the CEO's bio page on the website? Same thing with brands, products, etc. cetera. Uh, Buzzsumo mentioned.net, these can also be used to find um, fresher mentions. Uh, they're not that great for finding older mentions. So, you know, if you were written about 10 years ago, good luck. Especially BuzzSumo, it's not that old. Um, Mention.net's a little better for that. Uh, and this can be, <laughs> depending on the organization, it may need to be done in scale. Small businesses, probably not so much. There's probably not going to be too many mentions. Organizations, there could be millions of these. Um, so one way of scaling it is a tool called Scrapebox, and it allows you to search for misspellings, the variations, um, 
And again, you can add a footprint, which would be the minus site, your, your website. Uh, and it will actually go in and scrape the Google results, say the first thousand results that are returned for hundreds of different terms and just make you a very, very massive list that you can go through. Now, um, another tool, I've mentioned it already, Screaming Frog can take that list and actually go and look for, um, to make sure there's no links already on that website. And what you're gonna end up with is really a large list and a very large outreach campaign depending on the company. Someone like Pepsi, Coke, they probably get mentioned thousands of times a day. They probably would need a team to even follow up on all those opportunities, and I'm sure they have it. Um, again, this is the whole strategy. Find the mentions without a link and email them. Uh, there's good and bad ways to do outreach emails. Try and add something of value. Try and make a connection. Don't just say, I saw you mention my product, can you link here? The odds of that are not going to be very good. I mean, the success rate, even with a good email, is typically 30, 35% anyway, that you're going to get where you were mentioned and get them to actually go back in and add a link. Because you're, you know, they're going to have to take their time to go do that. So you really, some people are nice and will go do it. Some people um, will just ignore those emails. And that's just the way it is. So the more you can do to kind of convince them to, respond to that and actually go at it, the better. Another good way to monitor uh, mentions of your, again, brand, product, company, personnel, Google Alerts. This will actually, you can set this up to email you or set it up in an RSS feed. Anytime someone mentions uh, your company name, it can send you an alert. And I would do it daily, especially if you've got a lot. But this is a good way to also monitor your reputation. Find out daily what people are saying about you. Um, technically, there's other ways to do this as well. Uh, to check for links, you could run it through like Yahoo Pipes in a feed uh, with a Python script or something to check for the link. Um, but that's a little more advanced. Uh, reverse image search is also image reclamation. Uh, people steal images. <laughs> it's a fact of life. They do it all the time. Uh, some you want them to steal. Uh, if you made a great infographic, I want everyone to go embed that on their website, but I want them to link back to me as well. And a lot of people will take it and not add the attribution that they should. Uh, with bigger brands, logos. Logos are taken all the time. And some of them are really protective and they don't want their logos taken, period. Others will let you have it as long as you link back to their website somewhere in your article. If you wrote a blog and mentioned them. As long as you add that link, they're fine. But uh, you can actually find where your images have been stolen. Uh, basically in Chrome, if you just right click, there's reverse image search option. And it'll show you everywhere on the net where that particular image is, is coming from. Uh, another good thing is quotes, statistics, like any, any short form content that is highly actionable um, or highly memorable. Basically think at these conferences what people will tweet out, what they're, gonna, what they're taking pictures of up on the slideshow. Um, there are things that resonate for years. Some conference speakers speak on the same thing for years and years and they get quoted over and over and over again. Every time they're quoted, they should have a link back to their website, an attribution saying this is who it was. Their name may have been mentioned, it may not have been. Someone could have just stolen what they said, stolen their statistic, taken a statistic off their infographic. There's any number of, um, you know, it's, it's good content. People want to use it. Uh, they just don't always take the time to give a proper attribution. Uh, that's it other than questions. Anyone? Yes. Uh, I have a question about the images. How does the, how do you know if, let me I know if somebody stole my image because I can see it, but how does the search engine know if that image is yours or not? 
Are they just going by the alt tag or the title of the image? The search engine doesn't necessarily know it's yours or not. The reverse image search will show you everywhere that it is. If you know it's yours, then reach out. Um, hopefully it was yours and not that you took it from someone else. Uh, but there's also, you can also do, a, I'm trying to remember what it is, under the advanced settings, uh, they have a license attribution. So some, you can search by like Creative Commons or free to share and use. Um, that kind of thing. But as far as Google knowing who that originally belonged to, you, you might be able to do a sort by date and see where it was first, uh, but I'm not really sure. I was just wondering. And then the other uh, question I had was, um, there's been some controversy whether uh, linking, so I'm a web designer and if I put my link at the bottom, you know, this website was designed by me, uh, there's been controversy on whether or not that helps or hurts the actual web designer. What are your thoughts on that? Technically, it's against Google's guidelines. It's a very common industry practice, though. There have been cases where, and they're few and far between, maybe five to ten I hear about a year, where Google will go in and throw a manual penalty on those websites. Um, it doesn't happen too often, but again, it's technically against their guidelines. I think it's a common practice for most agencies in this area to actually do that, and a lot of the independents as well. Uh, they're, yeah, do you have a comment? Yeah, just toss a no follow on it. Then. Sorry? Yeah, put a no follow on it and hear within Google's guidelines. Yeah, you can do a no follow, or don't make it site wide. Maybe just put it on the home page. Um, you could even do a script to like change the anchor text, so maybe one time it's branded, one time it says somewhat of your keyword or location. Uh, there's there's different ways of doing it. There's no there's no perfect way to get around that. Everyone wants the attribution. Um, everyone wants the links. The links help. That's the reason people are willing to risk going against Google's guidelines for that. They will help a site rank. Uh, the no if you add a no follow, it's not going to help the site rank, but. Again, that can still lead uh, people to your website and give you traffic. Um, you know, I think a lot of our leads come in from sites we've designed. We can see in the referral traffic that you know several people came in and then they sent us a contact form and they called us. It depends on how, you said they didn't have much traffic, they probably didn't have many links. Um, that's where it com becomes debatable whether, what the value of that domain is, whether you want to, it might be good to keep it for a year, otherwise you're kind of starting from scratch again. It might be good to keep it forever. Um, it might be good to repurpose it for something else even. I, without really saying. What about the And to, to people that have know your business, it's different now. Uh, to keep the link alive, <clears throat> and then reach out to the link and tell them to update the link. Oh, no, no. It's, a, it's debatable on what the value of that is. Uh, with a business that new, there, there may not be much value, it may not be worth the and, time. Um, if I go out, reach out, and ask for a link, and get the link, and get asked, are you going to do it back to me? Was it that the reciprocal links are not that good? Yeah, and again, they're kind of against the guideline, Google's guidelines as well. Uh, reciprocal links, linking back to someone that linked to you. Uh, it kind of negates the value somewhat. Um, it's, it's very iffy territory. Uh, some people do it, some people refuse to do it. I mean, honestly, like, uh, it can be good, it can be abused. I would say, you know, if 
if I mention Dieter in an article uh, that I write, if I interview him or something, and he puts up a blog post saying, hey, go read this article where I was interviewed, I would say that's not necessarily a bad reciprocal. Uh, although it is, again, still technically against Google's guidelines. Can't you get around that by doing a little follow? Again, yes, you can use a no follow so to sort of get around that, but then the other person might not be very happy about right, that either. <laughs> well, you write an article about that. Then yeah. you still have a person. Yeah, not on the same. Yes. We might say it comes down to basically if you're trying to actively manipulate the service, then you're against the if you're using it as a functional, like, hey, I was in this article right here, you're probably not going to use, well, you might use some sort of targeted anchor, but that's a much more natural link that you're using to help people find out more information um, rather than trying to directly manipulate your search. Yeah, absolutely. And very rarely if you're doing something that, uh, unless you're doing it like 50 times, more than likely Google's not going to ding you. If, if you do 50 articles and they're all like reciprocal or where it gets really iffy is where like, you know, my friend Joe will link to me and I'll link to him and our friend Dave will link to him and me and I'll link to both of them and that's where it gets really iffy and Google's going to like start looking for this is, this is a problem, like they're doing something to try and manipulate, they're not doing something I, you know, if it's an interview and you say I was interviewed here, that's pretty natural in my opinion. I, I would have no problem doing that, um, linking back either way. Anyone else? Yes. Mm-hmm. Either way, we'll find it. Yes. Um, in fact, I think I have access. It should just be archive.org. Yeah. And you would just throw in um, whatever website. Um, let's go with the Digital Marketing for Business Conference. And we should actually be able to see old versions of the website. So we'll see if we can find the conference last year before it happened. Yeah. Uh, well, one way would be to actually go into one of these pages. Um, what that's going to give you is the old URL here. Uh, a quick test is just try and go to the old URL, see what happens. In this case, uh, yeah, still alive and it was redirected. The URL actually changed. It is different than what it was. This was events volunteer meeting and now it is sponsors to volunteer meeting space sponsors. So someone did redirects correctly here. <laughs> yes, you with um, in the article in search engine land. The way I do it is with Screaming Frog. Uh, you have to change um, the actual name of the spider to use IA underscore archiver because that's the only spider that, that the way that is that is the Wayback Machine's own spider name. So the only way to get their content. It, or to be able to crawl their content is to fake using their spider, basically. IA underscore archiver. Any other questions? Okay, thank you everyone.